hello i'm back again with um with a new book this time the book i talked many times about um it's about pharmaceuticals and the development of psychotropics um the book is written by richard miller and it's titled drug the science and culture behind psychotropic drugs this the writer i don't know much about but uh He's said to be uh, a pharmacist and somebody with um, science experience and studies. Um, but I like the book. Uh, it looked as if it had been well researched and uh, has very valuable information that a person needs to know. With a person with interest in science and uh, Uh, specifically the development of uh, pharmaceuticals and uh, the use of herbal and mid herbal herbs and uh, uh, plants in uh, in uh, uh, the in the pharmaceutical uh, manufacturing so i will present the first chapter the Um, I will represent other chapters. I will represent them to not represent them, and I will uh, make sure that I'm. I included most of the poems that I thought were interesting and valuable to share with you. Uh, the first chapter is um, it tracks the journey of Romanita Muscaria or uh, Flyer Garrick as has been uh, described or uh, named. The, it's a, a red capped white dotted mushroom, the mushroom that had been used in ancient times in the religious rituals for its psychedelic effect, as it is one of such plants that alters the brain functioning and induces. A, a trance-like experience filled with all types of hallucinations. This chapter tracks the use of this particular mushroom across history till it finally uh, had been dissected uh, by modern curious science and uh, it yielded its magical wild secrets uh, that were tamed to the beneficial usage such as uh, Uh, of health such as the treatment of tinnitus after the German and American Lundberg and Merck uh, pharma uh, companies failed to pass it across the FDA door, front door as hypnotic for fears of tolerance and abuse risk uh, if taken at higher level than what is recommended for its uh, for um, if it's taken by a risk uh, population. He opens a chapter talking uh, about an archeological site, uh, Gobekli Tepe. Uh, we've seen many talks about it and heard it uh, on the internet media. And uh, the translation of Gobekli Tepe, what it means, it means Port Belly Hill in uh, this place that has been is, uh, excavated in uh, Turkey, South Turkey, uh, revealed that it is the cradle of humanity's sin. Now, what's the significance of this to, the, to what the author is going to present in this chapter? This, uh, the, the, the site has been um, dated to have been uh, since 11,000 or 11,500 years and um, it is dated 11,011 or to 11,500 years old and era that is uh, people by hunter gatherers or supposedly have been people by these people following the established model of societies Uh, this era preceded the pre-pottery neurotic area that came after the Ice Age. Go back to Tepe, Tepe archaeological archaeologists excavated um, what is believed to be a temple of some sort, not a whole town. And uh, we all know that such edifice, uh, such place, uh, places um, prove 
that there, are, there has been or there are gathering around or settlements nearby. Jean-Jacques Rousseau uh, model uh, type of societies that's like canter gatherers, early farmers, shepherds, metal tools, pottery, village towns, uh, organized labor, government, and religion. Gobek literally um, gave us a new perspective according to the author. Uh, it, it says that villages and towns started as early as that era that was supposed not to be the era uh, uh, where villages and towns have started, but people were mostly hunters and gatherers. Now, he said, where did religion come from? And what's the connection, uh, connection between hallucinogenic and religious experience? The humans started as hunters, gatherers, as has been, you know, um, classified, hunted animals or others, humans, and gathered plants. Plants to eat and sorted them as what's good, what's bad, and what's poisonous. Large amount of these plants have hallucinogenic properties, chemical effects, hallucination, disorientation, and magical effects. During those times, nature was way wilder than we can ever compare to what we are living now. So some of those people gained wisdom in sorting out plants and became guardians of such wisdom. Those were the priests, the shamans. The author states that the gigantic structures such as those massive, uh, those massive uh, limestone megalith that were excavated or the ones lying in the um, surface must have been required lots of people, lots of strength, endurance and leadership, uh, food, organizing, gathering, treatment, and of course, religion. So, um, um, then he talks about the drug and the drug, the origin of, of religion. And this is what I was about to talk about aside, but this is what he is actually, I'm um, summing up his opinion. The entheogen theory, it's a neurologized term by, uh, in 1979 by, uh, by ethnobotanists, uh, the ones that study the relationship between people and plants. Um, it means that which caused God to be within an individual, to be one with the God, and that experience of having such hallucinations uh, caused the people to feel as they are, they have something greater that has been in them, or that they become one with. Intuition is an academic term, a euphemism for psychedelic and hallucinogen. It's like uh, the same word, but giving it a religious meaning. It is the use of psychedelic plants for religious rather than recreational purposes. That's the difference. When we say a psychedelic, it kind of has a negative connotation, but for those times, it's, uh, it was not used for recreational purposes. It was, it was not um, used just for having fun and gathering around and, you know, uh, enjoying oneself, but was for having that kind of experience that had them um, rise above the things probably that concerns them or things that make them feel something that extravagant, that's something they cannot explain. Pharmacologist Lewis Lewin, in, uh, who lived between 1850 and 1929, came to the same conclusion in his Fantastica that he published in 1924. He started the study um, of the drug mescaline by him self-experimenting. An Alunian Lewini got his name from his, described the effect of Mexican cactus and natives and how, how they correspond with supernatural intervention. 
Now we don't know what meant by supernatural intervention. Um, does it mean paranormal or spiritual, divine or demonic? We never know. There was no such uh, uh, explanation or such. Uh, there, there was nothing that clarifies this very particular point. Now the quotation uh, from the book says, uh, "Torn of some from his world by uh, world by primitive perception." material wants and necessities such as uh, Indian an Indian feels himself transported to a world of completely new sensations he hears sees and feels things which agreeable as they are must of necessity astonish him because they do not correspond with his ordinary existence and their strangeness must create the impression of supernatural intervention in this way, an Alunian becomes God. That hallucinogenic substance becomes God or that which allows uh, one to become one with God. Ancient and primitive religious rituals have been strongly linked and enhanced by hallucinogen plants. Such plants are included in ancient texts such as the Vedas and other ancient scriptures. Then he talks. Uh, uh, he presented the the Marsh experiment, the the Marsh shuffle experiment. This experiment uh, investigated the the entheogenic theory of religion derived from psychedelic. And they have a, they have a, a psilocybin project in 1960s by Timothy Leary and Richard Alpert. Timothy Leary uh, traveled to Mexico in 1960 and self-experimented with hallucinogenic psilocybin containing mushroom. Explored the drug for psychological curiosity. In the research, in that research, uh, the Herbal Psilocybin Project, two groups of students, group one and group two. One uh, took psilocybin and the second took uh, niacin, the control group. The control group. It was a double blind experiment. Double blind experiment. Uh, the um, the experimentees, the people, the subjects do know do not know anything about what they are going to be in. Uh, uh, and the the one that administer the the or um, uh, administer the the medication do not know which substance is which. So the others that are above the, the one that uh, devised the, 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 the research are overseen, but do, the, the rest do not know what, which substance is which. Um, the chemical substance was given prior to the service in Boston University. Now listen, uh, group one reported a powerful religious experience compared to, uh, to a, a few from the group two. The experiments reproduced the same effects and the slightly different uh, circumstances, circumstances on different groups. So they um, uh, performed that, ex that, that um, experience on two groups. One were given the psilocybin the second one was given um, uh, not um, a placebo but niacin and then they asked them about what happened to them during the, the service and uh, and they said that the one that took actually psilocybin felt like there was a strong connection a strange religious experience the other only a few reported the same the experiments were reproduced again got and yielded the same uh, outcome. So psychedelics, according to the author uh, and the people who performed those experiences, um, have roles in entheogenic belief and religious religion genesis. So people who used to take those substances and felt those kind of uh, extraordinary experience, you know, the world altars around them, people shaped altars, and they felt those feelings inside and what was happening inside the brain.
told them there must have been something great around them or they had become that something great and those plants have contributed to them having such experience. And that's how religious religion started for those people. And the people who gained more experience about these plants were the people who were jealously gathering knowledge about this experience and gained status socially among those people, higher status, because they know better and they can help people have such experiences. The Great Soma debate. Now we are going back to the Hindu and Persian scriptures that talked about some of these plants that he will connect to the mushroom. And that um, there was such a mentioning of the Soma. The book asks questions about the substance mentioned in ancient religious scriptures and myths, namely Soma, as I said, used by the Hindu Vedas gods. And then what was the substance? He said that uh, Nepenthe uh, took, uh, um, used in Odyssey, the drug of forgetfulness. Was it the mushroom? Was it the same Soma? And then what were the ingredients in Kikyon drink used to worship Demeter and Persephone in Greek mythology? And the ingredients for uh, potions that had witches fly? Well, uh, or feel as if they were flying. We, we, we didn't see any witches fly, but you know, other than on uh, on uh, TVs and uh, in cinema. But you know, Robert Gordon Watson, ethnomycologist, uh, a person that studies the relationship between fungi and society, had researched Amanita muscaria, most famous mushroom discovered accidentally, as mentioned in the book. He traveled to Mexico to study the effects of mushroom in indigenous uh, people, as they are known for using mushroom in religious ceremonies. So even modern people uh, that are still leading some kind of what we might call uh, uh, primitive styles, and, uh, they still use such uh, plants in their religion, religions, uh, religious ritual. And native Indians were reported to have been using such uh, plants also. So um, a big question arises about the identity of Soma that appeared in ancient Hindu and Persian scripture, Rig Veda and the Vesta, frequent mentioned uh, mentions of the Soma. It is described as the potion of God or the potion of gods, it gives fantastic supernatural powers. Wise men or people who had experience in gathering, sorting out plants, knew of the power of Soma, used it to communicate with gods. A hymn from the Rig Veda is, um, those are religious, very, very ancient religious hymn, Hindu hymns that are still uh, being studied. So um, there, is, there is such hymn here about the Soma that says, we have drunk, drunk the Soma and become immortal. We have attained the lights that God discovered. Now, what is Soma? Is it a cannabis? Is it a feather? So, Warden, um, was another scientist uh, that um, also, you know, studied uh, those mushrooms. Uh, studied Amanita muscaria, or you know, those the red capped white dotted uh, mushroom. Uh, it's called also fly garlic. It is very distinct appearance, widely used in pop culture. Uh, we have seen it in children's stories, in Alice in the Wonderland, Fantasia, Nutcracker, and Snow White. Effective extract of the mushroom in fluids uh, have an insecticide-like effect. It stuns insects, and it also have, has a very psychoactive, a psychoactive properties that are very potent. 
it is a large mushroom as I said bright red cap also can be yellow or orange a manita pantalina uh, had a brown cap and also has similar psychoactive properties facts on soma in ancient uh, text led Watson to believe it must have been derived, derived from Amanita muscaria. Now Soma is spelled S-O-N-A if you want to research it or something. Modern powerful evidence came from reports from 18th century. Korea people from uh, Kamchatka region in Siberia uh, there was a story uh, that was reported by a Swedish colonel that has been uh, that had been incarcerated for 12 years in the area. Reported there were people who drank urine of those who ate the mushroom to get its potent psychedelic effect. Travelers to Russia from different parts of Europe confirmed the fact witches and shamans from different Siberian tribes used the mushroom for its hallucinogenic effect. It is reported to preserve its effect up to five cycles of passing urine. Now we will understand when they studied it further, uh, its chemistry will understand why it, it, it can uh, be, it can have uh, that effect like even from drinking the urine of somebody who had uh, ingested that mushroom. So since the mushroom was scarce in uh, Russia and Siberia, drinking urine was habitual to get the effect of the mushroom. Now what are the effects? It alters the scale of visual perception. A small crack, the book reports, might look like a gigantic chasm. And that was reported uh, by the British mycologist my, my Mordecai Kubert Cook in his The Seven Sisters of Sleep, the earliest book uh, on psychotropic uh, medications. He described cheerfulness, giddiness, drunkenness, entire loss of consciousness, erroneous impressions of size and Distance. It is the mushroom artist ate uh, to alter size in the wonderland. Soma was also described in Rig Veda in Hinduism. The Vedic Sanskrit hymns as pass on urine. So similar to what has been reported very recent, relatively uh, uh, on uh, tribes in Siberia, uh, ancient Hindu people also did the same. They drank some. Is it the same as, as that, um, the mushroom? Is it the same as Amanita muscaria? That's why the, um, uh, they believe that's the same thing. It's nothing else but that very mushroom because the soma produces the same effect. And uh, hence the conclusion it could have been only notorious mushroom or derived from it. Indra. Um, disguised as an untouchable offered the Brahman urine, that's uh, some of the stories uh, that has appeared in the Rig Veda, uh, for drink, offered the, the Brahman urine for drink. The latter refused and, of course, was eaten by remorse when he found out who he had been talking to. So Watson wanted to investigate his hypothesis that hallucinogens were used for entheogenic effect. He was one of those people who believed so, that the genesis of religion was initially uh, started by having such plants and by such uh, plants that alters the mind experience and the brain experience. He, there was also a mention of the Jesus cult uh, uh, in the ethnogenic literature. Amanita muscaria could have been the same. They influence uh, uh, religion, the influence of religion on such mushroom. In his book, John Marco, The Sacred Mushroom, 
he dedicated a whole book to it. And the cross, yeah, the cross, you know, in reference to the um, Christianity, the mushroom was used in the religious fertility sacrament way before uh, Christianity has appeared. Ancient civilization concerned with the procreation and food, because that was a concern for them, viewed the rain as divine semen that impregnates the earth and the earth gives crops. He found the root of the name of Jesus. He tracked um, uh, the religious uh, jargon and uh, lexicon and then uh, find that Jesus meant in Sumerian language semen. And then the book when describing how this cult made the comparison between the big psychedelic mushroom with its big head erect into a penis, phallus, and uh, Jesus, which can actually stir controversy and even animosities for the obvious reasons known to all of us. So, as he reports how Aligo thinks that Christianity as a myth that sprang uh, from the fertility sacred mushroom. On the whole, many works came into publication after linked the mushroom Amenitemus caria, the psychedelic plants and psychedelic plants, plants to the genesis of religion. He was not the first, there were many others. Now, he went on uh, studying, uh, presenting the chemistry, tracking the history of these plants. And then let's say, so he said, let's see, what's the chemistry of soma? What are the psychoactive components? Um, he said they were different from the hal other hallucinogenic substances, psilocybin, LSD, mescaline. Of course, now he's not talking about soma, he's talking about the mushroom. Considered uh, poisonous, uh, not used for recreational purposes, that would make it more of a religious one, effect depends on the person's expectation. It's what you expect. If you ingest it, expecting a very strong religious experience, that's what you get. If you expect it, uh, expecting that you will be poisoned, that's what you get. That's what it means here. The person, it depends on the person's expectations. A study by Dr. Jonathan Ott in a pharmacokion, pharmacokion book included a study where a group one consumed the substance accidentally and they got a poisoning syndrome. The group two consumed the substance knowingly, knowing what they are getting into, for it, for it, and wanted uh, for its uh, psychedelic effect, and got what they wanted. They got the desired effect. Active chemical components that were isolated first was muscarine. It was isolated by the German pharmacologist Robert. Oswald Schmidberg, as the chemical constituents suspected uh, for the psychoactive effect. They said it must have been it. It must have been this component that does it. He found out it slowed the heartbeat similar to vagal stimulation. That's what was found out. But this uh, component, chemical component, exists um, in a very, very negligible amounts. 0.0003 percent of the weight of the mushroom. It also stimulates some protein receptors for acetylcholine and produces lacrimation, salivation, perspiration. It acts on the autonomous nervous system, ANS, not the CNS, not the central nervous system. So that substance, it appears, it has no hallucinogenic effect. So then it was kind of excluded. The poisoning effect was compared to that of mandrake, datura, thamonium, atropine belladonna, tropine alkaloids, which inhibit muscarinic acetylcholine receptors, with strong effect in the central nervous system, and can produce frightening 
hallucinogenic experience. Schmiderberg isolated another substance. It might have been responsible for the effect of tropanic uh, alkaloids, pizatropin or mushroom atropine. Modern chemistry has shown that Amanita muscae does not have any atropine like alkaloids. Researchers that have come after him said no, it doesn't have any of such uh, alkaloids. The real psychoactive chemistry of Amanita muscaria was revealed in the 1960s. In 1964, Japan laboratories um, in Uni and the uh, United Kingdom, Switzerland, uh, those laboratories uh, from uh, Japan, United Kingdom, Switzerland, isolated ibotonic acid, uh, alpha amino 3 hydroxy. 5 acetic acid and its decarboxylated product, muscimol, 3 hydroxy 5 amino methyl isozole. The botanic acid derived its name from the Japanese description, water tango mushroom, for Amanita strobiliformis, similar in many ways to Amanita muscaria. The mechanism chemical agent in abotonic acid, when decarboxylated, produce the psychedelic effect. Some of abotonic acid is, de um, is decarboxylated in, in the gut. Then now when he's going to make a strong comparison, as like um, convincingly with the, the mushroom and the soma that has been uh, described in the ancient scriptures. Uh, some of the ibotonic acid is decarboxylated in the guts and cross the brain barrier. The rest, most of it, is passed and changed in urine. The cycle of injection, the fact of decarboxylation uh, and excretion may be repeated many times, hence his belief that it must have been the same used by Siberian tribes and no other than the Soma mentioned in ancient, ancient Holy Hindu and Persian scriptures. How does muscimol work? Neuropharmacology uh, drives with effects on the brain uh, affects neurotransmission. How that studies, you know, how, uh, how drug, the interaction between drugs and the And their effects, uh, norepinephrine and epinephrine were the first neurotransmitters to have been discovered. Neurotransmission it carries, you know, uh, messages. Uh, chemical uh, neurotransmission was shown later to be how nerve cells communicate uh, buttons. Most of chemical uh, of neurotransmission is chemical, except for a few. Ernest Flory, according to the book, Ernest Flory, also a native working in California, discovered an inhibitory neurotransmitter he called factor I, standing for inhibitory. It inhibited, it inhibited the stretch receptors, uh, stretch uh, receptor neurons in crayfish. Factor A, I, activity was inhibited by piperotoxin. Piperotoxin, a powerful excitatory effect, can induce seizures in animals. GABA, GABA, gamma aminobutyric acid was discovered prior to piperotoxin. Its inhibitory effect can be reserved to, by piperotoxin, bupropylene, and strychnine. Glutamate, glutamate is another amino acid uh, with powerful excitatory effect on neurons. When decarboxylated, it produces GABA, an inhibitory uh, amino acid. 
glycine was found to have an inhibitory like effect on spinal cord, which in itself inhibited by strychnine. Understanding now, you understand why he's talking about why I'm reporting this to you. Understanding the effects of amino acid and identifying them inhibitory, excitatory, uh, you know, uh, for example, and how some produce uh, what each effect it produced help to understand how many times affects the brain and how the brain works. Maschimo and ibotonic acid found in Amanita muscaria are similar in many ways to glutamate and GABA with some slight chemical variation. Their structure is slightly varied. Abotonic acid is excitatory, while Maschimo is inhibitory. And those are chemical ingredients that have been gotten from uh, the fly agaric or Amanita muscaria. The mushroom, red cap, and uh, white dotted mushroom. Understanding the psychotropic effects of such mushroom required to understand the effect of neurotransmitters that produce a similar effect of such type. Agonist drugs have excitatory effects that may make the excitatory neurotransmitter and activate receptors for such neurotransmitters, while drugs with antagonist effects inhibit and block such receptors in the CNS. GABA has two major receptors. GABA stands for gamma aminobutyric acid. It has two major receptors in the brain. It has others, but these are the two major ones. A is the fastest because it's an ion-gated one. Activation results in rapid synaptic inhibition. GABA-A receptors are also the site of action of muscular. So Maschimo acts on these receptors, hence its rapid effect. 1980s uh, have uh, shown us that GABA, amino, uh, GABA A receptors were found to be related in structure to nicotonic acetylcholine receptors, also ligand gated ion receptors. Nicotinic, nicotinic receptors also mediate a fast synaptic action of acetylcholine in synaptic ganglia and motor neuron receptors. Now that they have identified some of its um, chemical ingredients and identified their function and what they what receptors, what brain receptors they can affect, what they can do, they try to harness it, to make it a beneficial thing uh, for modern pharmacology. Neuropharmacology uh, relies on natural products frequently. So Amanita muscaria psychedelic derived muscimol appeal to neuropharm neuropharmacology. Um, Sedatives, hypnotics, anesthetic, and anxiolytics, the one that um, uh, helps uh, counteract anxiety. Uh, and we have uh, those, for example, sedatives, benzodiazepine, hypnotic, barbiturate, etc. Those activate GABA, I mean, um, GABA uh, A receptors and wound for epilepsy as sedatives. Pharmaceutical industry decided to harness the effect of maschimol to better use. Benzodiazepine and barbiturate cause dependency and induce sleep that does not yield a restful wakefulness. You take benzodiazepine or barbiturate, you sleep, and you don't have a very restful sleep, and also your day, although we are awake, it affects your performance. It doesn't allow you to be, you know, functioning normally as if like uh, you didn't have any problems. Maschimol has a different chemical structure than preceding uh, GABA A receptors, um, activators, and has less side effect. Uh, compared to these, it has less, less side effect. Dr. Pugel, 
uh, Kurt Gard Larsen, a Danish scientist and colleagues, initiated this standard of muscimol exploration in 1970. They produced 100, uh, I mean, hundreds of uh, GABA and muscimol analogs and created interesting chemical substances. Gamma aminobutyric acid, GABA, is a flexible substance, rapidly metabolized, but does not cross the brain. When synthetic, when you ingest it, it does not cross the brain, or even when it's injected. Therefore, unsuitable for the desired outcome. It's produced in the brain, but when you take it as a, as, as a, as a synthesized one, uh, either you ingest it or, or you get it as an injection, it doesn't cross the brain. Muscimol, a natural substance derived from Amanita muscaria, has been found to act on GABA A receptors. Its chemical structure lacks the carboxyl group, but has its uh, but it has it uh, has it has this chemical uh, the carboxyl group uh, in the chemical structure of um, muscimol is replaced by three isosazol uh, group. Muscimol crosses the blood-brain barrier and activates GABA-A receptors. Those Danish scientists added a carboxyl and amino functions to muscimol to make it a GABA analog. Now to turn that to a GABA analog to something that looks almost like GABA but crosses the brain that not looks that ha that's almost a GABA but still has to cross uh, the brain. They crop some of its structures and uh, added some and make it a new analog able to cross the brain barrier. The new uh, offspring of this, uh, you know, uh, of this uh, experience uh, was TIP. T I S P. Uh, or gaboxadol. TIP uh, is a fast acting, very potent GABA A agonist. The indication for TIP, as presented by Cross Guard Loss and his colleague, the treatment was the treatment of uh, epilepsy, pain, and schizophrenia. Now we see how it has been infiltrating that mushroom. From a psychedelic, it's becoming something else. It's becoming a treatment for the brain disease and, uh, and psychology. In psychology, the patented drug was restudied in 1990s by Merkel, uh, Melke Lancel, the Max Planck uh, Institute in Munich, and was found to produce powerful hypnotic effects and somnolence in animals. So it was considered for its treatment of insomnia. TIP proved to be a better hypnotic agent as it produced a more restful sleep than its predecessors. Compared with the benzodiazepines and barbiturates, they said this is the blockbuster medication. It, you know, it allows people to sleep well and they work, wake up rested and you know, invigorated uh, with no signs of um, uh, tiredness. Chris God Lawson had Lundberg get interested into his patented drug. The German company, he said, I'm gonna get those interested in my uh, product, uh, together with his friends. The company, uh, and then started trials on human subjects. Tip, it means four, five, six, tetrahydroisazolo, C4, C, pyridine, triol. That's the whole chemical uh, name structure. Was rebaptized as a gaboxadol. So TIP, T H I P, is now gaboxadol. Lumber, the German pharmaceutical company, convinced Merck. A US, a US uh, uh, Big Pharma pharmaceutical company, most known as Big Pharma, to join its effects 
uh, its efforts to present the drug to the pharma market. The FDA to be had to be convinced. Successful, uh, uh, first, the drug had to, uh, that uh, to convince the, that the drug is uh, is a safe and good product and uh, and uh, efficient. First, uh, they have to present an IND, investigational new drug application. It should be presented to the FDA to the Food Drug Administration. Now, it includes three phases. The experiment, they asked them, they said, okay, you did your experiment on animals, now we want it on human beings and in the USA. Three phase trials should be completed with satisfying results before a new drug application is presented to the regulatory body, uh, whether the FDA or some other uh, regulatory body of pharmaceutical manufacturers. First phase trial. General safety test, how safe the drug is to normal subjects. Second phase trial, how well the drug and dosage work for target disease population. You said it's for epilepsy or for uh, uh, insomnia. Let's take a population of this, a number of these people, and test that on them. Third phase trial, more safety tests that include dosage, effects, and how the drug compares to already existing and marketed uh, uh, ones. Once approved, it can be marketed. Once you pass all these uh, phases, it can be marketed. Once approved, uh, it can be marketed. Gaboxadol trials results had Lundberg and Big Pharma believe they got the right, and they got it as the right one. Enhanced. Uh, it enhances slow waves, unlike benzodiazepine, uh, longer, better sleeps, better day performance compared to Ambien. It took less time to target population to sleep. Now, the fall of Garboxol, why did it fail? Lombok was at having um, Garboxol, was aiming at having a Garboxol. Uh, um, uh, schedule that the lower scale and become an over-the-counter uh, medication since trial did not show any dependencies and side effects or tolerance. Lambda and Merck froze their gaboxidol project at phase 3 study. Why? First, Merck had bad news about Vioxx, increased their um, Blockbuster medication, as has been uh, described in the book, um, it it showed that it increased risk for heart disease, and they have been involved in lots of uh, lawsuits. So they bought cold feet uh, as far as gabapentin is uh, concerned. They said, uh, that's all they did." Now, second, gabapentin did not work as well in human trials in U.S. A transport molecule is the same molecule that transports aromatic amino acid like tryptophan. American, uh, their diet compared to uh, the European people, they consume 20% more of the caloric intake and they have lots of protein in their diet. Uh, um, and lots of it is derived from uh, 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 protein derived tryptophan and supplements. 5-HTP, a decreased potency, the, this pack decreased the potency of the carboxyl. It doesn't, it no longer compares well to uh, other uh, products uh, as far as uh, efficiency is concerned. Side effects, visual hallucinations, restfulness, uh, restlessness, and anxiety. Uh, no, no, before that, um, Third phase, uh, FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, according to work, mandated uh, further tests to prove safety and uh, and included a test should include the, uh, people who who were known drug addicts or drug abusers, and also to test the the drug at higher level than what it is clinically therapeutic. Side effects. When this happens, side effects 
who are visual hallucination, restlessness, and anxiety. When these run by the top executives of Merck, they thought those side effects were similar to LCDs, LSD. So the offer to adopt the drug was approved. They said, no, we are not doing it, sorry. At clinically therapeutic doses, however, had been have there been more patients and more research has been done or just convincing the FDA uh, at clinical the right clinical therapeutic doses no such side effects were manifested in insomnia or even drug abuse but you know uh, there was the risk when taking a higher a higher uh, than was therapeutic there were uh, detrimental side effects studies later have shown that all GABA Amino, uh, gamma aminobutyric acid A agonists manifest unusual effects when taken by chronic drug abusers. Long drug, long term drug abuse uh, can alter the neurons and the line the viewer response to the drug the, the, the abuser is taking. Gaboxadol and Maskimol elicited opposite effects in addicted animals. When taken to animals in their experimental lab, uh, lab, they have animals addicted to certain uh, drugs, and then when when they gave them a gaboxadol, instead of inhibiting, it, it excited. The, it acted as excitatory instead of inhibitory. Years after its original patent had expired, gaboxadol showed to be beneficial in cases of tinnitus. Tinnitus ringing in the ears. Some people have that as a disorder. So then they found out that it, it it's a good thing for for such disease. And Manita Muscaria finally yielded its secret to the modern science. And Manita Muscaria have been the plant that was used in entheogenic ritual, the giant monolith that looked humanoid shaped to archaeologists in Gobekli Tepe could have been a monumental representation of the sacred mushroom that helped the ancients interact with deity or even become deity. So this is it. It's a long uh, chapter and I hope I, um, I will get responses from you and then we could talk about it. Next chapter will be about LSD and how they found out uh, the chemical ingredient which can make it and how they used it in uh, how they tame it. They tamed it. I said when I said they tamed it, how they take it from that wild effect and from being just a recreational um, uh, chemical to something that actually benefits people' health and make them function better. We'll see you next time. Until then, be safe and have a nice time. Thank you.